Welcome back to Casa Refine. My name is Jorge Ifinu. And you know what? Today I'm going to sit down because it's been a minute since I did a sit down video. And actually I'm in the middle of some DIY projects and a makeover. So this is just the perfect time to kind of just sit down, chat with you, talk about some living room design mistakes and how to fix them. And I just have to preface by saying this video is in fun spirit. Seriously, it's not that deep. These are just my opinions currently and they're always changing, but let's go ahead and get started. Poor furniture placement, probably one of the more overlooked things in a living room, but it's actually very important because we want to create a functional and visually appealing layout. We want to create a space that of course we want to feel comfortable in, but also functions for a conversation, or maybe your living room also serves as your family room with the TV. We want to keep those things in mind, right? So probably the sofa, right? The more common thing in a living room. Now, one of the things I often see is, and I do this myself, but it really just depends on the space, is arranging the sofa in a way that feels inviting, but not necessarily static, not making the room feel static. So one of the things is you might put it up against the wall. And sometimes that is the best solution, especially in a smaller space. But if you have the room, maybe move, them, move some things around, maybe put it in the center of the room, put a console or a bench behind it, two chairs in the sides of either or either side of the sofa, or maybe if you have a larger space, maybe consider two long sofas. I know that the love seat is probably losing popularity these days, but there's so many different configurations with seating where you can do accent chairs, recliners, which by the way, I'm in the hunt for some attractive recliners because 99.9% .9 of them are less than appealing. So I'm on the hunt for us to find some attractive recliners. I'll keep us posted, but yes, definitely play around with seating, with different furniture types. Maybe we wanna do a round coffee table rather than a rectangle, or maybe even a nesting table situation. But instead of pushing all the furniture against the walls, create a cozy conversation by placing the sofa and chairs facing each other around a coffee table. Now, of course, we want proper furniture placement, but we also wanna keep in mind the traffic flow, the conversational areas, maybe a focal point, maybe you're working with symmetry, maybe you have a fireplace in the center, and those sorts of things can really start to influence the design of the space. Pay attention to the shape of your living room. Is it a rectangle? Is it oddly shaped? Lack of proper lighting, a very important thing because not only do we rely on lighting to see at night, we actually spent a decent amount of time of it using artificial lighting and improper lighting can really kind of affect the design of the space, the feeling, the mood of how everything is rendered at night, right? So one of the common things that I often see, and I'm guilty of this myself, is I would rely heavily on just overhead lighting, especially when I was living in a couple of apartments, like I would just use the overhead lighting and everything would look kind of bland, right? We wanna work with different lighting conditions. Of course, we can use our overhead lighting for actually seeing things. And maybe we turn off those ceiling lights and create a vibe with some floor lamps, some table lamps, some wall sconces. You know, there's actually a lot of uh, great options out there these days for plug-in wall sconces if you are um, looking for something renter friendly or don't wanna go through the hassle of hardwiring and maybe even something different. I personally love this thing right here that I actually created um, a few videos ago. This is sort of like a minimalist art piece with some lighting. Kind of get creative with the different lighting conditions that you can use around the home. Of course, we also have candles, sort of that play of brilliance, meaning these little decorative things that kind of just add a little bit of oomph, a little wonder, a little bit of depth to a room. Maybe install a combination of recessed ceiling lights for ambient lighting, a task lamp on the side table for reading, wall sconces to highlight some artwork, or maybe other architectural features if you have something, maybe you have some beams or maybe some crown molding. I don't know, just kind of get creative with it. You know, one thing I don't like is a smelly living room. Seriously, I always have to have a diffuser or a candle burning because fragrance really alters the mood in a room, right? One thing I don't like though is vanilla. I mean, I like vanilla flavor, but I don't like vanilla scents, you know, like get me away from vanilla. But what I do love though are designer fragrances and I'm so thrilled, so happy to be partnering with Scentbird. They are sponsoring today's video. Scent Scentbird is reimagining everything about how people discover, shop for, purchase, and even experience 
fragrances. Scentbird is a place to begin or deepen your relationship with fragrances. It acts as a place to express your individuality. So here's how it works. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance for just $17 a month. That's right, $17 a month. You get to pick out what you want to receive so there are no surprises. They have perfumes and clones and a lot of unisex options. With each fragrance, you get a 30 day supply so that you can try it out before committing to that large bottle. Cause they can be a little bit pricey. Those designer ones, sometimes 300 to 500 hundred dollars so they come in these little bottles which are perfect for travel by the way this one is the Luna Rosa by Prada. The Luna Rosa is a sly, cool clone featuring the cleansing cold fire of a sage. I'm addicted to this one. This one's by Chris Collins. And actually, these are a really generous size. Again, a 30-day supply. And finally, we have Ocean Odyssey. Oh, I wish you could smell these. Actually, you can. And I have a discount code for you. You can get 55% off. Yes, you heard that right. 55% off your Scentbird order using my discount code. That's just a little over $7 your first month. Month, available for shipping in the US and Canada. Experience quality fragrance at a good price. I get sick of the crap. I get so sick of just seeing crap everywhere, whether it's decor, remotes, what have you. And you know what? Life happens and we're all in different seasons of life. Maybe we have kids, we have pets, maybe some messy family members, or we just have a lot of decor, whatever the deal is. But when we have things that feel too cluttered, then it can really start to affect the feeling, the design of the living room. And we want to make sure that everything that's in there is intentional, it's well thought of, and it has maybe the ability to multifunction. And one of the reasons for this might be not having enough storage solutions. And of course, there are different types of solutions uh, to get you organized. Of course, we have furniture. I personally love sort of a credenza style piece, a cabinet with closed doors, not open shelving that I can see everything, but with closed doors so I can throw all the crap in there, get it out of sight, out of mind, and organize it later or never. But just getting it out of sight, out of mind, that really helps for me at least. We also have baskets. However, baskets can be a little tricky because it can be an invitation to gather more crap. But with some baskets, you can collect all of those things, corral, so maybe some toys, some rows, other things that you might have laying around, maybe some storage baskets that you can use on your coffee table, hide all of those remotes. I don't know about you, but I don't know, if the, like everything has a remote these days. We have, you know, maybe ceiling lights, uh, maybe some LED things, the cabinet lighting with TVs, the console, the Xbox, the Roku, all sorts of crap. So maybe using a box to corral all those things really is going to, help. The next design mistake is ignoring color and texture. Now these could be their own thing, but we'll put them together here because color and texture are important for informing the mood and style of a living room. And if one of those two things is off or both of them for that matter, but if one of those things is off and can kind of throw off the design of the room and making it feel unbalanced to some extent. So of course we want to have consistent or cohesive color palettes. That doesn't mean everything needs to be matchy matchy. You can have color as well, but if you have something that is really warm tone in terms of like the wall color and your furniture, but then maybe you have artwork that is cool tone, it can really start to feel unbalanced. So paying attention to those color tones and all aspects of lighting, furniture, artwork, throws, those are very important. If you lean towards neutral spaces, this might be a little bit easier because oftentimes those neutrals kind of work with each other. And maybe you can choose a neutral color palette with pops. I don't like that, but extensions of color, but we'll say pops of color um, to create a cohesive look. And then maybe you add some texture with a plush rug, maybe even some throw pillows. The next design mistake is neglecting the proportions of the furniture and accessories because if one thing feels too large, it can feel out of place and kind of throw off the scale of the room, right? This can really disrupt the visual balance of the room. So choose properly sized furniture and accessories. If you have a large space, you're gonna want a large sofa or a large sectional if that's what you choose, or maybe even rather than doing the sofa and the uh, what do you call them? Love seats. Maybe do two sofas and then the coffee table in the middle and then maybe do some accent chairs on either side. Kind of just playing with different seating configurations. If you have a wall that is very tall, take advantage of that height add some artwork that will not necessarily fill up the space, but make sure that the wall feels balanced. 
improper rug placement and size. This is one that I personally struggle with, but it's one of those design mistakes that if you don't choose the right rug, because the rug really anchors the room, it can really make things feel off balance. And one of the contributing factors to this could even be the pattern. For example, so previously I had sort of a Persian style rug, this one right here. I absolutely love that rug, but it gave me a little bit of trouble because as you know, with a Persian style rug, they often have sort of this pattern where the center is clearly outlined in the design, right? So one would want to put the coffee table in the center of there. But with the layout that I had here of the furniture, I really couldn't put the sofa in the center or the chairs so I kind of had to move things a little bit off to the side but then the coffee table wouldn't be in the center so you can see it wasn't in the center of the rug it looked fine but it kind of just like threw me off a little bit now moving forward now I have sort of this striped washable jute rug I love it this rug is great because there really is no defined center for the rug. And of course, we definitely want to ensure at least the front legs of the furniture pieces are on there. So we have a little bit of flexibility on how we can move a rug, right? Also, scale. I used to put smaller rugs in my living rooms. I remember in my apartment, I thought, well, I have a small apartment. It's a small living room. I need a small rug. Turns out, if you put a larger rug, now granted, we're not going to the wall to wall here, right? But something that is proportionately large for the room, that uh, actually made the living room feel a little bit larger. And I didn't even need to change the furniture. I wish I had photos of this. This is my college apartment. But the scale, the size of the rug will definitely impact. <sighs> I almost don't want to say this design mistake out loud, but <laughs> lack of personalization and character. Yes, that is a thing. And you know what? We all have different design styles and design really is personal, but keep in mind that your home is custom to you. So why not incorporate things that you have maybe collected over the years? Not everything needs to be the latest Target drop or Amazon find or what have you. Insert things that maybe you DIY, things that you collected at a vintage store, a thrift store, maybe things that you found at Target, but also incorporating pieces that speak to you. Swap things out for the things that have been sentimental to you or if you're, if you're not really emotionally invested into your space. I know I personally, I go back and forth with this. It's kind of tricky because at the end of the day, things are just things. There's just materialistic things. They don't matter to me that much, but there are things that maybe I've collected over the years that I love. So it's sort of this like weird balance of creating a space, a living room that feels well-designed, but not too. Inadequate seating and comfort. A design mistake that should not be overlooked because of course we want to have comfortable seating for yourselves, your family, your guests, but sometimes we don't have the space to accommodate everybody. So maybe get creative, maybe have some ottomans. Ottomans in front of the coffee table is something that I often see. Not only does it add sort of design value, but it functions as extra seating. You could also do maybe like a coffee table rather than doing a traditional coffee table. Maybe you use sort of that uh, ottoman. If you have like a modular sofa, they often sell sort of the ottomans things. They're not my favorite, but if you really are big and entertaining, uh, that's something that you can definitely do. Disregarding the flow and connectivity with adjacent areas. The living room is not the only room in our space. Sometimes it also serves as our family room. Maybe it's adjacent to our workspace. For example, right here, this workspace for me is basically adjacent to the living room. So it is something that needs to be really well thought of in terms of design because we're gonna be seeing it, right? You want something that you can easily put things away if you are, have company over and you're straggling to hide all the crap. Um, so keeping in mind the design of every angle that you walk, uh, that you see from your room. So consider the flow and connectivity between the living room and the adjacent areas. Make sure that you have cohesiveness in terms of colors. That doesn't mean the rooms need to be matchy matchy, but when you walk into the adjacent room and then you walk into the next adjacent room, there should be a little bit of cohesion with it. That could be done through, of course, the basic things, right? The flooring, maybe you have some crown molding that is, you know, uh, cohesive throughout the house. Maybe some artwork or things like that, rugs. So maintain a consistent color scheme or a design style between the living room and the adjacent areas to create a cohesive, connected overall look. 
Now the final design mistake that I see in the living room is the lack of balance and harmony. I've talked about balance quite a lot throughout this video, but this is a very important thing for our living room. This is often the space that we gather at the most. So we want to make sure that we feel harmonized in the room. How do we do that? Well, create visual balance by arranging furniture symmetrically or by incorporating a mix of different heights and shapes in the room. Okay, you know what? I can go on and on, but you know, we're going to call it good for today's video, the living room. It's the space where we gather, where we relax, where we tell stories to friends and family or watch television, whatever we use our living room for. We want to make sure that it feels comfortable, that it's inviting, and of course is attractive as heck. But you know what? It takes time. And ultimately we want it to be comfortable. We want it to be attractive. It's a really personal thing. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, special thanks to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out the links down in the description box to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. I am having some actually really wonderful DIYs coming out soon. So be sure you are subscribed for those. So I'm working on a makeover, but thank you so much for watching. Check out these recommended videos right here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.